13 days, men. That is all that is remaining before our September 12th deadline to sign up for our first ever men's retreat here in Indianapolis, Indiana on October 1st and 2nd. I want to invite you to be a part of this group that is now over 100 men coming from 25, 26 states to descend upon Indianapolis. Many of them camping out on the church property. Uh, some of them staying in hotels, some of them staying with friends and family in the area. Uh, regardless of how you get here or where you stay, we want to invite you to be a part of this first ever retreat. Now, I want to talk to the guy who just checked out because you said, I keep hearing about this. I'm not coming. I'm not going to be there. I can't be there or I don't want to be there. Listen, we want to bring the retreat to you. And I've said this from the very first day we started to talk about this. There is an online aspect to this retreat. When you sign up for the retreat, you are invited to this closed Facebook group. Yeah, I know I feel the same way about Facebook, but this closed Facebook group where the men who have signed up for the retreat are invited to be a part of that. In that group, four times throughout the weekend, we are going to be streaming what's taking place here. So you're going to get two main sessions, one on Friday, one on Saturday. You're going to get the Friday night campfire and the Saturday morning breakfast. Now, I can't bring you eggs and bacon and all that, but I can bring those sessions to you. That way you never miss any of the talking points, any of those conversations that are taking place. In that group, you're also going to find pictures and things throughout the weekend. Guys are having conversation right now. Camaraderie is being built and developed. Listen, you're going to get to know some really good men. In addition to that, when you sign up, uh, you sign, you put your shirt size down, all that. I'm going to send you the retreat shirt, the retreat PVC patch, and the retreat sticker on that Monday once it's over. I'm going to put that in the mail. You're going to get everything. You're going to get the sessions. You get the shirt, the patch, the sticker, and you're still going to get the community that you could have had you know, if you come here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure we remove all barriers. And those guys who are home, and I know there's guys that have already signed up who say, I just can't make it. I already have another commitment that night, or logistically, I can't get there. I know. We want to do everything we can for you to make sure you get that retreat experience. So sign up today. Don't miss out on that. September 12th is the deadline for that. Uh, yesterday, I released uh, a new patch. I don't know if you can see it on the, the video here. Uh, it's an OD green patch. This is the Pursuit of Manliness. It is uh, um, like the first patch, PVC, that 3D material. I, I just love these type of patches. I just feel like uh, they feel like you get a little more quality for them. has the iconic beard logo in the center. These patches are $10 in the gear store. So make sure you visit thepursuitofmanliness.com forward slash gear. The first thing you're going to see is the retreat. Go down just a couple spots after our online series, you're going to find this patch as well. Now, let's get into this conversation. Uh, you're going to hear from Rob Stone today. Rob Stone is a good brother in Christ. Now, I don't know if this resonates with you, but Rob Stone, uh, like myself, kind of has that lone wolf mentality. We, we, we don't mind being left alone. That 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, you know, mind your own business, work with your hands, depend on nobody, but be thought well of by outsiders. Rob's a good guy. He's made a, a tremendous impact on the men in Tribe. Um, his wife wrote a, a testimonial to what Tribe is doing in his life as well. So that tells me that Rob isn't just talking at us in Tribe, but he's living it out in his home. And I think what you're going to get from this conversation today is uh, it's it's okay to have times where you remove yourself and you push reset and you you have to get your mind mind right. But we want to make sure we redeem those times. But in all that, knowing that that's kind of how a lot of us are wired, we especially with all the things going on right now, we'd like to be left alone, but we still need to be connected to the pack. We still need a tribe. You still need a, a band of brothers who will challenge you, encourage you, come alongside you. We've got some guys in tribe going through some real heavy stuff right now. And I'm telling you right now, they have an army of men bombarding heaven on their behalf or behalf of of their loved ones. And, and I want to encourage you with that. Do you have an army of men who are bombarding heaven on your behalf day in and day out, who come on, come alongside you, who get in a car right now and drive, you know, cross state lines to do what need to be done? If not, prayerfully consider that. Maybe, maybe signing up for tribe this next session is something that you need to get into. Or maybe the retreat is just dipping your toe in the water, just kind of checking this whole thing out. So men, enough for me. Let's get into today's conversation. All right, men, at this time, I want to welcome Rob Stone to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. Rob, thank you for making time today, being on today's show. Man, I tell you what, uh, um, the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, and by extension, Tribe, um, has been such a blessing for me. Um, really, a life changer in a lot of ways, and so it's it's an absolute honor uh, to be on here and chat with you about Jesus and chat about just anything we're going to do today. 
Yeah, man, you've made a, a certainly a, a great investment in my life. And, you know, we we're just talking about a marriage calls that we're a part of a tribe, you know, just a second ago and um, your investment in those guys. And it's just as, as you and I have been able to, I would say, reconnect. We knew each other years ago. Uh, I'd say marginally we're, you know, different, same age, different grades, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, but how God brings orchestrates these details together and brings us together. So, Rob, would you just kind of introduce yourself, who you are, where you're located and, and what's next for you, man? Yeah, um, I'm right now I'm in a little town called Uji, South Carolina. It's near Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I've been sort of a jack of all trades, master of none, I guess, in the true sense. So I've, I've been a lawyer and, and I was a tennis coach for almost 30 years. And now I'm uh, sort of in a, a transition period um, to, to go and do pastoral counseling, Christian counseling. So I'm kind of in that mode right now or shifting gears and be, being a, a student again at age 45 which is is challenging and has its own story to it but that's kind of where I'm at but you know it's more about just you know trying to follow God's will and God's directive and and that's what I'm about you know one of the things that you and I really connected on outside of Jesus is uh a phrase I just want to throw out to you. I want to throw out this phrase first, let you just marinate on it for a second and see what you think. So when I say the phrase lone wolf, what comes to mind? Yeah, I, for me, it's, it's the, it's the introvert um, who, I mean, you, you said a couple different times on different podcasts dealing with COVID that you socially distance. Well, um, I do too. So I think about lone wolf, I think about just the introvert sort of mindset and personality to where you naturally sort of navigate yourself to some, to alone time, to isolation, maybe even just to get away from the noise and self-reflect and it's and recharge your batteries. Because for, I think a lot of lone wolves, or people that are very introverted. And I, I've had two instances where I've had to take the Myers-Briggs deal. And it, I got my highest grade I've ever gotten in academics because I got the 99th percentile of introverts. So I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing, but that was my highest grade, right? So, you know, when, when you're that, you need those alone time to recharge your batteries. But with that comes a lot of good things and with that comes some challenges and some things you need to be cognizant of and be aware of especially when you're you're dealing with with our enemy satan I, you know as you're saying that i think you know there there are weekends where i'll come home after preaching and being with people i i will physically hurt like i i love people i want to pour into them i want them to know jesus i you know i love those but i get home i I've never ran a marathon, but I feel like I've run a marathon. Like you, I'm just exhausted. And so it'll, it may might be a day or so before I feel like, okay, we're, we're, we're back in this. And I think as we're going to talk about, there's both, there's two sides of this coin. You know, we, we have the, we have the stereotypical man idea that, you know, Lone Ranger, John Wayne, I don't need anybody. Uh, but you and I, and I know there's a lot of guys who listen to this stuff or engage in this stuff. We tend to navigate towards that lone wolf thing not needing to be around a ton of people all the time especially for validation so for you what's what's the upside for you pulling yourself away maybe a couple of things that you do that you say this recharges my battery personally well I, I really do three things and and you know my personality type not only being very introverted I'm also very intense so my mind's constantly going so if I don't take an activity, for example, that is going to sort of take all my concentration and mindset, it doesn't recharge my batteries. So um, I do a lot of cycling and people will ask me, well, do you want to be in a cycling club? I'm like, no, I I'm literally, I want to be the lone wolf on the road. I mean, usually South Carolina, there's like five people here. So I'm on a country road where no one's going to pass me for an hour. And it's just a, it's a place to sort of let everything sort of calm down. Uh, the noise sorts of, sort of leaves you and you can kind of connect with God on a, a better level for me. I'm not distracted. Um, so I do a lot of cycling. You know, I love bow hunting and archery. 
it's hard to put an arrow in a, in a small area. So that takes everything I've got to sort of concentrate that. And, and now recently I'm trying to learn how to rope cattle. So I have a two cattle dummies in the backyard and, you know, I'll go out there and throw loops on them. And my neighbors probably wonder what in the world he's doing, but, but, you know, it's, it's doing those activities where number one, I feel my batteries being recharged, but I also can connect with God, you know, and, and I found it interesting. You posted uh, a post about Luke five sixteen the other day, and I've been digging into that. And it was interesting on the, on the translations because it said Jesus would often withdraw to the wilderness. One translation was to desolate places. One was to lonely places. So depending on what Bible you were reading, it was maybe a little bit different. So, and Jesus was doing that so he could pray, he could connect with the Father. And I feel a better connection, you know, when I'm, a, when I'm alone and I can kind of get my thoughts together and, and connect with God. It's funny you say that. I, I laugh when you talk about the cycling club because I met an individual last night, super nice guy. And he is covered head to toe every time I see him in the, uh, the colors of a team that I support. And so we got to talking and he invited me to like um, a fan club type thing where they get together and they watch this team play. And at first I was like, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I, you know, the more I thought about it, I thought I would be there about 10 minutes and I would think, I just want to go home. Like, I just want to go to my house and, and watch it by myself and yell at the screen by myself or whatever. Um, you know, there, there, there is a both end of that. And we'll get to the other side in a second. But uh, the key at the end of it, you talk about getting alone with God, because I think it's easy for introverts or people who are uh, they're you know, their recharged is, is alone time to just go there and just go there and just kind of, you know, pack up your stuff and just move away from everyone else. That time needs to be intentional, right? To, to get those batteries recharged so that we don't see people as a nemesis or an enemy. Not a thousand percent. I mean, it, I think that's probably the key to this whole conversation, whether is being intentional about it, having a plan and it is about God. So if I'm going to take the time to recharge, nothing's going to recharge me better than to have, you know, God pour over me and God speak to me and, and get the peace from him because, you know, peace from something else going to be a bandaid that lasts for 20 minutes and you're seeking another bandaid. So if whatever that is, I mean, it, archery itself is not what's really recharging my battery. It's that it's an activity I can do, but while I'm doing, I can be praying and be thinking and, and, you know, be trying to connect with God. And I, a couple of years ago, I was thinking about this, getting ready to speak to you today. And I was going, just like a lot of guys out there going through kind of a rough patch at work and it happens to everybody. And at that particular job, I always take the week of Thanksgiving off. And I think a lot of introverts can probably connect with this. I was, I've, we go back to Iowa every year for Thanksgiving. It's my bride's family's big holiday. So we go there and I was, getting a chance to go bow hunting on the family farm. And I remember as soon as that plane landed and drove two hours to the farm, I was in a tree stand 30 minutes later. Like I just was kind of desperate for God, desperate for whatever that was going to bring. And I got in the tree stand and I remember 30, 40 minutes into that, I realized how much noise is around us from phones and computers and people and if you live in a city like you do in Indianapolis, cars and all the noise that comes with the city, and it's all man-made noise. Every bit of it's man-made. And then I'm sitting in a tree stand and it's critters rustling around in the woods and wind and it's, it's all God-made noises. So I, I, it's no coincidence that Jesus did some of the things he did in the wilderness because we're creating God's image. And it was just an example of how much I... I need that. I think a lot of men probably need that. That moment just to get away from all of the noise and get plugged into God's noise. Yeah, just to 
turn it off for a minute. You know, I, I, there's sirens always around here and I, you know, I joke, but I'm kind of serious. It's like the song of our people around here. I mean, every time I hear sirens, I'm like, good night. Like I, I just did not grow up that way. I, you know, and, and even when we go out of town and, you know, last year during uh, the second wave of the pandemic, I don't know what wave we're on at this point, but Thanksgiving time, as you said, we had Thanksgiving, just me, my wife and my kids. And I thought this was the absolute best Thanksgiving I've ever had. And it's not that again, people are bad or whatever. It's, it's, it's that, to me, that that was the most important things. And the key is, you know, people say, well, I can I can worship God in a boat fishing. You can, but are you? The the key is, are we being intentional to get reset or are we just trying to remove ourselves? And and during that, those waves of pandemics, whatever we're at now, I've spent more time outside, even in this city where I live, just listening to birds or trees or whatever. Um, we gotta, you know, be connected to the creator. So when you go out there. You know, you're shooting bow, you're not reading scripture, at least in, at that point. So how do you make sure that you're really redeeming that time? So when you walk back in and you see your bride, you're like, I'm closer to where I need to be. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole point of any, whatever your activity is, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it could be anything where you're withdrawing as Jesus did, you know, many times is to understand why you're doing it. One is to commune with God. One is to pray with God. Two is so you can pour into other people. Because it's not all, it's not about you. Yeah, your batteries are getting recharged, but what are they getting recharged for? I mean, you're a pastor, so you've got to go pastor your church. For me, I'm a husband, I'm whatever role I'm in at that time, coach, um, whatever. I have to go pour back into people because I can't just stay isolated and, and be by myself the rest of my life. Like that isn't an option, nor is it a healthy option. So it's making sure you know, why am I doing this? And so that way, when I go back in the house, like you said, and I connect with my bride, like she knows I'm going to come in a little more renewed. And it's then I'm able to fully connect to what we need to do together as a couple and not be distracted and be all over the place. And so I can be the husband I need to be. And that's key as, as a couple, because it can't be about me and it can't be about you. I don't know about you, but my wife is a people person. Like she wants to be around people. She wants to go. And I die a little on the inside every time we add something else to our calendar. Or my first thought is, do I have to do this? It can't be about me. So because I know that I have to participate in society, then I need to make sure that the times I do have that, that I'm taking advantage of that, like you're trying to do, you know, roping cattle in your backyard or getting on the bike or whatever. Um, you know, knowing yourself, this is not like, we're not, we're not trying to get a, you know, another personality test, but you have to know your strengths and weaknesses because I need to function at the highest capability to the people that matter most to me. If you came back in for, you know, roping cattle or riding your bike and you're worse than when you went out, good luck next time trying to get out there and go do it. Well, and I, in marriage, I'm very blessed to have the bride I have and carry over the course of 15 years, you get to know each other and those personality types. My wife's very extroverted. She is people person personified. So I know to have a good marriage, I'm going to have to go into social settings so that she can be recharged. I know that. So, and, and, and so when Christmas for, you know, perfect example is like Christmas party season, I'm going to have to go do a few of those, even though it's, it's hard. It, it actually is a battery drainer for me, but she also realizes, okay, I can, there's a limit to what I probably can, I should ask him to do. And she also knows if we do one of those, he's probably going to need some bike time, some bow time. And that's part of having a good marriage. But I also have to realize it, if I just isolate and do it my way all the time, that's not healthy. And it's not healthy for me either, because we need people as well. We need community. But for my marriage to be everything God intends it to be, you know, I've got to realize what her needs are as an extrovert as well. I just started sweating a little bit. You started talking about all those Christmas gatherings and no. planning my escape routes. And, uh, and listen, I, I've said this for a long time. Uh, there's a fine line between being an introvert and a jerk. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying 
people are bad. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. None of those things. I'm saying, you know, it's just, and, and introverts understand this. Extroverts may not. I think you can be a high functioning introvert as well. I mean, there's times I've said it for a long time. I had a guy, my first ministry call me out because I was staying in that introvert lane and, um, that's game day. You got to put your game face on. You got, you got to, you know, drink a Mountain Dew, Red Bull, whatever you got to do, but we got to show up. And, and especially if we're going to be a witness for Christ, you know, my idea would be sit in the corner with sunglasses on, just leave me alone. But um, that's, that's not what God's called us to. So there, as we use the model of Christ, he withdrew off into desolate, lonely wilderness type places, but he also had the 12, the 72, et cetera. What's the downside um, what's the downside to being introverted and kind of a recluse and, you know, you've been sheltering in place for 45 years. Um, what are some things that you've picked up on? Hey, if I'm not aware of this, th this turns negative instead of a positive. Well, I think two things come to mind. Um, you know, this day and age, everybody's, you know, got one of these and I'm a firm believer that one of the tools or plays or weapons of Satan is to either isolate you and attack or to attack when you're isolated, when you've sort of voluntarily isolated. I mean, you see it in Matthew four and Luke four. I mean, where Jesus was in the wilderness when he was tempted by Satan. So you got to sort of know that that happens. So isolating to this to me is pretty dangerous because all of a sudden, you can send a text you shouldn't have sent. You can end up on a website you shouldn't end up on. And even if it's not something you know, blatantly sinful, you may just end up down a political vein or something where you just get distracted. And, and, and you did a podcast, which I thought was brilliant, a while back about the death scroll. And I caught myself later that week going, how many videos of cats can I look at? What, is this what God's calling me to do today? Like, sitting here looking at cats or whatever it was, horses, rodeo people, whatever. So you've got to be, I think, cognizant of if you go to the, some of these withdrawal places, Satan is going to come for you oftentimes. And there's a real, there's a lot of sin that happens behind closed doors in isolation in, you know, in the wilderness, so to speak, and you have to protect yourself against that and, and be mindful. Um, if not, you can find yourself down some really, some really bad roads. And the second thing I would say is that you do need community. You can get a little too comfortable going, I'm good. Like, this is great. And even if you pulled away and studied the Bible 24 seven, that's what you did. You were just in the Bible. So you're not doing anything. You're doing good things, things that are rejuvenating. That's not what God's calling you to do. You know, and I think about, I wrote it down in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, when Paul's talking about, we're supposed to stir one another up and meet often. That's why I, I love tribe. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, without that, you know, you're, you're probably taking too much of the medicine of being an introvert, too much of that medicine of being isolated and you're going to get sick. Well, I think in like John 18, where Judas and his band of soldiers come to arrest Jesus, and I said recently that, you know, Satan uses our places of solitude against us. And we, if, if we're not careful, you know, we, that almost becomes an idol, you know, our places of solitude. And I've been there where that, that hobby or that, that whatever has become something that uh, I got to get out of this family thing. Cause I can't, I got to get to that, or I need to get out, you know, and, and that that's not good either. You know, this scripture talks about bearing one another's burdens and the, there's a ton of one another's you're not going to get the one another's, you know, or, or, you know, if you and Carrie just bunker down your house, it's us against the world. At some point you're going to need someone else, or maybe more importantly, somebody may need something that God's teaching you. And that, as you talk about tribe, that's one of the things we tell guys all the time. Like, why on earth would you withhold that? from somebody who may need it and you're, you're not even aware of it. And so if we're not careful, we like use the phrase, I'm good. I say that all the time. And I'd venture to say there's 700 men that are going to listen to this. that think the exact same thing. I'm good. What has a community showed you about where you're good and maybe where you're not good? Well, you know, you realize, um, first of all, you know, the thing that tribe shows us is, is everybody's got something to add, you know, and 
through any given week, you realize how much, how much everybody's dealing with. So, so much is going on. I mean, and people are dealing with anything you can dream up. Somebody's dealing with it in just a small sample size of hundred guys. And almost we can, you can cover the, the world in, in of everything that's going on. And so you can learn a lot from those situations and you can be a source of hope and encouragement and at any given time, if nothing else, you can just pray. But if you don't engage and know about it, what are you going to pray for? I mean, you're just going to pray and it's not going to be very specific and it's not going to be tailored to, hey, man, I know Joe down the street is really going through something. I'm going to lift him up to Christ right now. And I'm going to hit my knees. And if you're not engaged, if you're just over there in your, you know, in, in your isolation zone, whatever you want to call it, if I'm over there shooting my bow in my yard and I'm not engaged at all, how do how can I be of any use? I mean, I, I'm very ineffective. I mean, God can use anything at any time, but I'm I'm a very ineffective man at that point. So, you know, I, and, and it's not that I need to go call talk on the phone all day, but you know, this thing also works as a, as a great weapon of God for an introvert, because I can send a text message. I can check in and go, how, how are you doing? Mother? Is everything okay? I've been praying for you. Do you need something to pray about? And you can start to use that to be really effective, but you've got to plug into some community. You have to have some people you want to plug into and want to plug into you. As you're saying that, if you're listening to this, Rob, Rob's holding up his phone. Um, actually, he's holding up a Pursuit of Manliness hat. You need to go get one in the gear store. I'm kidding. Um, while you're saying that, one of the things that comes to mind is um, I don't think you and I have ever spoken on the phone. Um, we text each other every Sunday. You know, you have an incredible text of how you're praying for me, the church, et cetera. There's people in the church who don't even know you know, that you're praying for them. And I think they're getting blessed because of that. We've talked through Zoom every other Tuesday for about the last year roughly uh we talk you know we comment engage uh, about once a week at least through challenge videos and through other forms of communication and so th to me that's that's where like for an introvert we i can we can thrive in an environment like that because you can you can be you know responsible to someone connect with them be encouraged by them etc but not have to have them you know vomiting their life on you at the same time you know always you know there and you know what I mean by that is, you know, you can pour into people, but also still make sure that you have enough in the tank for your wife, for your job, for the things that you're doing. Um, and, and we are living out being mutually encouraged by one of those faith. Like you said, everyone has something to add to the conversation. When you look at like tribe, we have hundred guys in there right now. You're right. There are some unbelievable prayer requests. And I shouldn't say unbelievable. There are some guys with some incredible struggles. They're victories too. But I mean, guys that get real about this. And I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I'll learn about one of them. And I think, man, why did he not say something sooner? Why did he not? But Rob, that's me. And I'm going to venture to say that's been you. Like when you, with that lone wolf mentality, what keeps you from the pack where you go, nah, not going to do that? Well, it's a couple of things. One, I do think we're wired. I mean, it's written on this, this tribe shirt that I'm wearing, you know, First Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12. I like to be self-reliant. I like to be, you know, I'd like to be that type of man. Um, so I, I was sort of raised for good or for bad that way that rely on yourself and, you know, don't ask for a ton of help. And, you know, it's, it's up to you. And that's not necessarily completely aligned with what the Bible says for sure, but that's just the mentality I think I was raised with. And so, when I finally reach out for prayer, it's usually things have gotten kind of far down the line because I've struggled with it and battled with it on my own. And to the point I realize I can't do it. I'm, I'm going to get defeated by it. So now I need to call in the brotherhood to, for advice and prayer and whatever else. And, and instead of realizing a little sooner in it, you can be self-reliant and you can be all of those things it talks about in that Bible verse and still bring things to the forefront and allow a brotherhood of men or a church or whatever it may be to, to pray for you and, and to, 
just to, to counsel you in any way, shape, or form, or give you advice, or whatever it may be. Yeah, I, I think about the example, the best examples we have are Judas and Peter, you know, both of them fell away from Jesus. Um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, there are guys that are listening to this, they probably have fallen away, but there are guys who are, they're going through some stuff right now. And for whatever reason, they're wired like you and I going, man, just, just try a little harder. You'll be fine. There's other people got worse stuff than you. It, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to vomit my life on people. I don't want people in my business. If I'm honest, I don't want you to know things about me that I don't want you to know, et cetera. Um, you know, I wonder what would, you know, Judas, if he just said, guys, I need you to pray for me, man, I'm really tempted right now to, you know, because when I look at those examples, when Judas realized what he did, he took matters into his own hands and it ruined him. Peter at least stayed connected to the community. He at least remained connected to the other disciples. Now he went back to fishing. He thought the whole thing was over, but he at least kept that community there. There's a both end of this that, that you have to have that first Thessalonians 4, 11 to 12 mindset of work with your hands, mind your own business, be dependent upon nobody. But I'm, I can only do that when I have the right people in my corner. So for you, what's, what has been that value? You talk about tribe and I know tribe's not for everybody, but guys that maybe they're going to a church, men's group, whatever, they're not sure about that community. What's, what leap did you take? What step did you take to say, all right, I'm putting myself out there. You know, I know you were getting ready to go through a big season of life where you said, I'll give it a try. Let's see what happens. Well, I, I just felt like I don't think you realize it's missing until you try it. it it's it's almost take a leap of faith, and then you re, for me that's how it was. Was like you know I I, I listened to your podcast. I, I knew you, you know a little bit, and and here's tribe, and it's a group of men that are going to talk about the Bible. I'm like okay, all that's good once I took the leap of faith and I joined that and, and you could join a small group at your church, you could join a men's group that you go have coffee at the, uh, every Monday, there's, there's a million different ways to do it. I would venture to say for most people, if you're being intentional, you start to do that. You'll realize it was missing if you didn't already have it. And for me, I didn't have it. I was pretty good about, okay, I'll read the Bible by myself and I'll, you know, go to church on Sunday, I'll do those type of things, but I wasn't plugged in the way that I am now. And it's really a life changer um, in so many ways. And it, it's one of those things where, uh, and you probably feel some of the same way when you run these calls, you do a call at nine o'clock Eastern. There's some times where I'm like, man, I'm, I'm beat today. Like I, and I don't know what I'm going to say on the particular topic. And I just, yeah, this is in, in the thing, but you go on it and without exception at 10 o'clock Eastern, I feel hundred percent better. I'm, I'm like, wow, man, I would have really missed out an opportunity if I would have went and watched the baseball game at eight 30, instead of getting onto that deal. So I, I really would venture to say a lot of men who aren't doing that. If you're listening now, find something, find some little community, what it could be your own style it could be it could be the bike club it could be there, like i said there's an infinite number of ways to do it but if you're not doing it i do think you're probably missing out and if you're a lone wolf and you're already just generally isolated a little bit more content in that i think you might be missing it a lot more than you realize i would say this too i maybe you're you feel the same way i don't know um I like the lone wolves, like, I like can tribe. I love the lone wolves. You know why? Cause they ain't going to require a whole lot from you. Like that, they, they, they've built that where, you know, and I'm not knocking anyone else, but just that idea that, Hey, I, now I got this. Now the downside of the lone wolf is it takes a long time to get to know them, you know, cause they're, they're a little more guarded, a little more, you know, but when we put ourselves in these, you know, challenge videos, and this is not a, a tribe commercial necessarily, but the reality is through that community, you say, how authentic can it be? every single one of these guys go out of their way to meet up with one another. You know, every single one of these guys wants that brotherhood. And so I'd say, if you say, well, I got something in my church, I just haven't showed up, just show up to it and, and don't do it once. You're going to have to do it several times. The beautiful thing about tribe is we, we give you lots of opportunities, but your men's group, it's once a month or once a week or whatever, just commit to it. Once you realize you're committed to other men and you make that, that stand like, Hey, I'm, I'm dropping anchor here. Uh, 
they get stronger and better, but you get something, as you just said, Rob, you didn't even realize it was missing. And then when you start to really get that, and it's not going to happen in six minutes, but when you start to get that six months, a year, whatever into it, I'm going to venture to say your wife's going to begin to notice. Like your marriage is not going to get better overnight because you attended two men's meetings. Your marriage gets better overnight when you start to pour into guys, they're pouring into you, and then you begin to live it out. And then people notice the difference in your life. Would you say it's true for you? Oh, a thousand percent. And, 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 I, and I'm, I, as I said earlier, I'm blessed with an amazing marriage. I, I've, it's been one of the, it's probably the, been the greatest blessing God's ever bestowed upon me. Um, but once I got involved on a much deeper level and made it consistent, made the effort, Carrie couldn't help but notice the difference because all of a sudden, you know, we're having more specific talks about the Bible. We always, God's always been in a topic of conversation in our house, been the center of our marriage, but it's, it's deep in that, you know, and then all of a sudden she goes from, okay, I, I read the Bible, but now she's highlighting the Bible before she goes to bed every night. And it's just, it's those little things that may not seem overly significant, but, you know, now, you know, we're, and even this transition of, of career right now, there's been a lot of rough days in that. And our marriage has been able to just run those over like a bulldozer. And part of that's just because of, it's because of God, because he's in the center and, and these communities help build that. And so you owe it a little bit to, I'm not a father, but if you're a father, you're a husband, you're an employee, you're a brother, you're a, you all of us have a million roles all those roles are going to be strengthened you know if if you do something like that um you also said the lone wolf takes a minute to get to know i think that's important if you encounter one because you know my wife always says to me she said this to me many times you're not very friendly you know and so the people meet me for the first time and they're like they don't like me just then they get to know you and they love you some period down the road, whether it be a couple of weeks, a month, whatever. And, and so you kind of have, I have to realize that as a lone wolf and go, I need to be maybe a little bit cognizant of that and be a little friendlier at times. But if you encounter one, you realize they may come off a certain way early on, but if you gain their trust, then you've, you've got that man on your side forever. I mean, the, the loyalty factor is huge. And if you get into that circle, you're there. So, you know, if you do encounter one in your men's group or just somebody at work, you know, realize that and give them a little time to, to build some trust and open up to you. Yeah, I, I was literally thinking that as you were talking about not being friendly, that I'll be loyal to death. Like if, 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 we're, if you're in, we're in. And, and I will, you know, whatever you need, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get the same thing. I was at a, uh, my kid's school function last night. They had us work the gate to collect money. I'm not the guy you want to come walk. I mean, I'm, I don't even want to, you know, whatever. And uh, same deal. My wife's introduced me to all these people she works with. And I'm thinking this ain't going well. I mean, I know how they, you know, or I have guys reach out to me and go, Hey, let's, let's partner up on podcasting or let's net. I'm like, you're not going to want to work with me. Like I, I promise <laughs> like you, I, I appreciate the compliment, but there's days I don't want to work with myself. So I understand that. But the, the, the important thing is to get people that will stretch you, get you uncomfortable, including your bride, including these men, and identify people who are for you and with you. Again, they don't have to live in your hip pocket. But if you know they're for me and with me, what do you got to lose? I mean, and as you were saying that the first part, I looked up on the site real quick. Your wife wrote an incredible compliment to you. Uh, on, we posted on the tribe kind of, you know, some wives testimony things. But, you know that's that's the fruit in your life and your marriage not because of a you know tribe it's because you're living out being a biblical man of god she gets the the blessing of that but you have an army of guys pouring into you in various ways uh, tonight through zoom you'll have guys connect with you in different ways um, you're talking about text messages you're getting from these guys that i would assume none of them live anywhere near you but the power of community uh, the lone wolf needs that right 100 percent. we we talked about being a shepherd sometime last week and, and man, it's all of us at different stages, different seasons. We, we stray a little bit. We get, 
you know, you, you did a, a podcast about being one degree off and it doesn't, and one degree off over a period of time can be pretty serious, but we're all just, we are sheep. We're scattered a little bit across the field at different times and, and having a group of men or a group of people who are going to help keep bringing you back into the flock when you get a little bit sideways and you doing the same for them there's no way that doesn't have huge consequence you know huge blessings not consequences blessings down the road that you begin to see in your fatherhood and your marriage and as a husband and those things because you know i think the worst thing you can do is sort of be alone and think we're all good because if no one's there to sort of check you to look and see where are you in the field are you with the flock? Are you over there seven acres over? I mean, that's dangerous. You know? and, and so that community helps really just, you know, and, and we've got some guys, they'll, they'll call you and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm a little worried about this going on. You know, I think, I think you need to pray about it. You may need to repent of that. And that's all healthy. That's not, you know, we're not perfect. We're not, nobody, there's not anybody who's listening, certain. I mean, definitely not me. It doesn't need to <laughs> repent of many things on a daily basis, hourly basis, minute by minute basis. So it's okay to have that. You know, we've kind of gotten to where well, I don't want anybody to critique me, call me out because it means I'm failing or whatever. You, you got to let go of all that because you need people that are going to say, out of concern for you, out mm -hmm. of concern for your bride, your kids, your job, I'm going to, I'm going to, reach out to you right now sometimes it's just in prayer sometimes it's in a hey I, I think you might need to repent of this that's all really important and healthy i think some some guys just they don't want it you know i've, I've witnessed that you know they'll come in and yeah, i want accountability or i want a better you know and, and someone will make a comment to them or you know and they're gone they're gone and, and the truth is there's either some dad issues in there or nobody in your life has ever told you that you're not as awesome as you think you are and uh boy i tell you um, when you know guys are for you and with you and will speak the truth to you because because they're championing your cause, yeah, you know, you're right. We got some guys, I think they'd get in the car today and get there and say, Hey, you, you got it, man. Rob, you know, there's guys. If you said, Man, it's it's unraveling here in South Carolina, and you know, and I I need whoever will show up, you'd have an army of guys. You know, I call it the Cajun Coast Guard. You'd have a Cajun Coast Guard rolling in going, What can we do? You know, what can we do? Well, if you and if you ask somebody to pray which that gets tossed around all the time. And I, you know, and I, I have to be, I'm hard on myself with that. I can say, I'll pray for you. I need to do that. Like, yeah. so maybe I should get on my knees right now and do it because otherwise, yeah, life happens. We forget. But if you ask a lot of these guys to pray for you, if you're in the right community, something's going to check up on you. <laughs> it's not just going to be, Hey, I'm praying for you. Facebook post gone. It's, Hey, you, you might get a text an hour later, two days later, a week later. Hey, man, um, I'm checking in on you. How's, how's everything going? And you, that's a blessing. That's not somebody being nosy. Well, that's just a blessing. So you, you got, you've got to be, you got to want that and be comfortable with that and, and, and be comfortable doing that to the brother that you, you've prayed about and go, I should go check on him today because maybe he's still not doing well it takes time sometimes for things to work and god's timing is is not always our timing so maybe they're still in that season they need more prayer they need one maybe another checkup so be that guy you know be that for somebody else and it's not about you that's it man be that guy you know, what I mean, um, and as I said, you know, the value in the lone wolf is they they usually don't require a lot, but they they can give a ton. And and you know, I've seen you've seen that with Zoom when they when they finally do share, when they do make their challenge video, when they do hit you up in text, you're like, there's there's a lot of meat to that. There's there's a lot of thought that's that goes into that. There's there's a couple of guys I can think of right now, and I'm watching their video. I'm like man, I, I, I rarely miss their videos because I want to hear what they have to say, because I know they're not, they're not manufacturing something and it's well thought out and it's authentic, you know, and that's what we want. We ultimately well, want authentic community. 
that's i mean i'm, I'm a believer that being authentic is everything mm -hmm. um, people will sniff you out if you're a poser people will sniff you out if you're not being authentic and you lose your effectiveness you lose your credibility you, you kind of lose that that ability to have the community i would say that again if you encounter a lone wolf and they've reached out one they trust you mm -hmm. two they have put some thought that isn't you're not likely to get some emotional quick i'm going to unload something reactionary type thing this was well thought out you know for me it, oftentimes it's done by email or or i've recorded the video 46 different times because <laughs> like i'm really i feel the need to let you know ask for help or reach out and and woo, i gotta i want to make sure this is exactly right yep. exactly how i feel and so you know they've poured a lot of thought into it not to disregard somebody who is emotional and throws a lot of things out there but it's just to be aware like wow okay that person's reached out to me i need to pray about this and god may be calling me to help here because i i got called in on this by somebody who put a lot of thought and a lot of effort and maybe trusted in me enough to reach out yeah that's what i'm thinking like I think from the, the introvert lone wolf side, sometimes we could see, you know, extroverts, extroverts or people with different personalities or different approaches as, you know, it, again, in that negative context, but, but realizing that these, that it, it takes all of it. Like my wife, I, I know that she is for me and with me. So when she's speaking into my life and saying like, you're what I've heard this plenty of times, even the last couple of weeks, you're not friendly. You don't look happy. You look whatever. Um, she's on my side. And I need to take that as such, you know, this is not her trying to chop me down or take me out. She's trying to make me aware of your effectiveness towards other people is going to be at an all time low if you're not cognizant of these things. So, you know, she understands the need to be removed, but she also understands the need to be restored. And you can't do that if you're never around the right people for the right reasons. So, and you well, know that. I, <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. That's why when, when I've been told that I've, I've had to contemplate it because maybe it has the implication in this, I might encounter somebody I only get one encounter yeah. with. So if I come across the wrong way and I'm, I lose my effectiveness, I mean, God can do all things. He doesn't need me. So I mean, it can get passed to the next guy down the road, but still that I may not be able to do what I was called to do in that moment. It, and so I need to at least be thoughtful of that in how I act, how I come across on, on step one. I know that if I get 20 chances, there's a good chance if they come, if they stay around and put up with me for 20 chances, that it, it might work out pretty well. But I need to maybe get the first one right a little bit more. And that's just, again, it's not getting your feelings hurt. And it's just, okay, I, maybe I need to get better in that one regard we, we're all until god calls us home we're all we, we should be trying to get better a little bit every day you know and if we're not then we we're probably missing out on some real blessings i agree man well, rob we're gonna wrap it up there man I, I i thank you for doing this we had a little hiccup i had a hiccup yesterday so i had to recancel had to cancel for this and then tonight we'll be on zoom again but you're a good brother in christ you're a good encourager and man you're investing in guys all across the globe so thank you for doing that man it's a, it, it's the blessing i get is 10 times anything i've given so it's anything anything has been just been amazing it's been an honor to be here once again guys thank you for listening to the pursuit of manliness podcast i hope you're encouraged and challenged by the conversation between rob and i as i said before he's a good brother in christ he's authentic and genuine and one of the things i like about rob is he just keeps showing up well he's, he's a man of his word he holds his commitments and and i think that's a testimony to how he is living out his faith you know in his own life private life reflecting the public life i want to go back to what we talked about in the beginning man i want to challenge you and encourage you get signed up for that retreat you get the shirt, the patch, the sticker. Maybe you're like, well, I'm not really into that stuff. You're still going to get it, but you're going to get community. You're going to get camaraderie. I know there's a lot of men out there who are desperate for it. Maybe we can't quite put the words to it, and maybe you wouldn't be humbled quite yet enough to say the word desperate, but you know you need it. Listen, this is a non-threatening environment. You sign up or you show up. Either way, we want you to make sure you secure your spot 
in this first retreat. You will not regret it. Again, uh, you're in a group of over 100 guys. We're just regular dudes. We love Jesus, and uh, we always welcome one more. Amen. Appreciate you guys. Let's keep pursuing biblical manliness.